The next presentation is RGAS Field Maps and Introduction by Ryan Selman of Esri. Um, as a team lead and solution engineer with Esri, Ryan focuses on developing GIS solutions that support the business requirements of local government customers. Ryan specializes in ArcGIS platform design and web GIS implementation with the local government space. Prior to his role with Esri, Ryan worked for Summit County, Ohio's planning and GIS division as a GIS technical applications manager for four years. So uh, take it away, Ryan. Okay. I'll uh, assume you can hear me okay and my slides are coming through, all right? Yep. Okay, perfect. Well, I'm going to keep the camera on for just like a couple of minutes here for an introduction because um, the internet's a little spotty. So I'll probably, I'll turn that off here in a second, just so everything runs smoothly. But yeah, uh, appreciate the uh, introduction, uh, Dave, and, and and thanks for having having me and having Esri uh, kind of participate in, in, and talk about our technology a little bit today. And I think later on this week. Um, so like what was just mentioned, uh, you know, my, my name is Ryan Selman. Um, I uh, uh, am kind of at a heart uh, solution engineer, um, which really is uh, basically, a, uh, I would say a business analyst, um, you know, working with local government cross customers across the upper Midwest, um, understanding workflows, understanding business challenges, and hopefully pairing our, our technology and solutions uh, to some of those challenges. Um, I, I lead a small team of folks out of our Columbus, Ohio office, um, but ultimately roll up underneath the, the Minneapolis regional office. So very familiar with y'all's neck of the woods and, uh, you know, cover, cover the upper Midwest. Um, so today, uh, again, it's going to be pretty heavy in the technology, um, a newer piece of technology that we've that we've recently come out with. Um, it's called ArcGIS Field Maps, very kind of feature function uh, specific. And again, we're going to be talking a, a lot about, you know, the app itself. Um, you know, again, uh, uh, pr pr pretty in, not not too much in the weeds, but um, pretty technical. So. Um, just wanted to lay that out there. Um, and again, it is just an introduction, but uh, we'll, we'll hopefully get into some demonstrations and show the application um, kind of in action. So I'm gonna, I'll pull off the video um, and we'll just kind of, we'll keep rolling. I would say if there are questions along the way, like feel free to stop me. Um, I'd love to have a conversation with folks rather than kind of one way uh, presentation, drop them in the chat or, or, uh, or um, you know, speak up. I'm, I'm happy to take them as we as we roll along. I'll try to go fast. Got a lot of content, so I'll quit the introduction and the context setting, and and we'll just get into it for now. Um, so let me try to advance my slides here. So if you're if you're familiar with our our, our platform over the last, I would say maybe five or so years, the ArcGIS platform. Um, really, you know, we we've had this field story and a set of field capabilities that round out full on. Um, field operations. I see one question already um, from Matt. Is this replacing collector? I will get into that um, uh, in, a, in a second. Hopefully that'll, that'll, that'll be pretty clear here in, in, in just a couple of minutes. Um, appreciate that question. Um, but yeah, so the field operations story has been, you know, it's, we, we've had, we've had apps really starting with collector. Um, gosh, it's been about five to eight years uh, since that application has been out. And then we've, you know, over the course of the, you know, the last maybe five or so years, maybe more recently, right, we've added some capability around, you know, how do we plan for work? How do we navigate to the work that we're doing? How do we understand who and what in terms of our assets are around us? Um, again, the, obviously the capturing of information has been, been held, uh, um, you know, it's been, been, been happening with the ArcGIS Collector. Um, more recently, we've introduced capabilities for tracking locations of our um, employees out in the field um, through an app called ArcGIS Tracker, right? And then ultimately, you know, the coordination of all of this work can be done in more of an ad hoc fashion with apps like ArcGIS Workforce Tracker and Explore as things pop up throughout the day. You know, things things happen, snow emergencies happen, right? And you have to direct people in an ad hoc fashion to go plow this set of streets or, you know, whatever the, the, the field worker wor workflow is, uh, you know, those those applications right there can, can help you kind of respond to those things in real time. Um, and really where we're going, right? Um, and, and kind of pivoting away from all these, you know, these various applications that have been in the platform. Um, ultimately what's happening is we're rolling all that capability into one application, right? So it's called ArcGIS Field Maps. So uh, through the application itself, you've, you'll, you'll have the ability to plan for that work, send out work orders, right? Hey, 
Joe Schmo, go do this inspection out here, report back to me when you're done through the application, right? That workflow that's traditionally done in workforce, that'll be done in field maps. Um, the ArcGIS Navigator built-in heads up, you know, navigation turn by turn directions, that's gonna be in, in field maps as well. Um, and then, you know, kind of the list goes on in this sort of wheel of field operations and capability. Um, so understanding the, the Explorer capabilities that you're used to using in the Explorer app, that'll be in field maps. Obviously collector capabilities, the monitoring from tracker, and then that ad hoc kind of coordination um, as well will be, will be um, all kind of buried in into one application and so so really again just to kind of hit on it and maybe put a finer point the capabilities are coming together into one application but they are coming together in phases so i will get into um a little bit about uh you know what those phases look like in terms of you know when when specific capability is going to be poured into each of, into the application over time but ultimately you know these five kind of tenants are going to be again, available in field maps, right? So this, this best in breed mapping system that you're used to seeing in Explorer, you know, world-class data collection um, that you're used to seeing in Collector, tracking technology with Tracker, you know, this, this, this uh, you know, tasking and work management sort of capability, which has been traditionally handled with workforce. And then, you know, that heads up state-of-the-art navigation capabilities, turn-by-turn -turn directions um, that you're used to seeing in commercial applications like Google Maps or Apple Maps or Waze, um, but really against your data and your networks, um, the information that you guys curate on a day-to-day -day basis and being able to search for your assets and, and route to them all directly in that application, right? That's been in Navigator and that'll be in Field Maps as well, so. Um, and really the, the, you know, it's hard to kind of boil it down. Um, I would say the, the five key, well, maybe just take a step back. The reason why we're doing this, right, is a direct sort of response to what we're hearing in the market, right, and from our customers, from, from you guys, quite frankly. Um, you know, we've heard a lot, you know, the apps are great, right? They do, they do one thing really, really well, but it's really hard. It's hard for my end users to, to understand which app to use for which kit, you know, which, which instance or what scenario. Um, it's hard for me as kind of like the GIS manager, the GIS um, technician or lead or whoever, right, to, to kind of deploy these applications and uh, understand who's doing what and which user type gets this, right? It, you know, it's just, it just, it's kind of cumbersome, right? And then, you know, even when you're, you know, back out in the field with, with end users, right, the, the app linking, right, I want to view something in, exp in, in Explorer, but then I want to do that, like, data collection inside of Collector, I have to click this link, it opens up a second application, happens to be Collector, sometimes you got to log it, right, kind of cumbersome, right, so, so this is really our response to kind of, kind of those concerns and and really uh you know again just just the user feedback that we've heard over the years so i just you know i always want to pause and say like that stuff is welcome a lot a lot of our i would say the majority of our technology is developed in response to stuff that we're hearing from our customers so um just keep it coming and this is really a good good example of that so I've kind of hit on this already, right? The five key benefits, we'll drill into those. Single app to deploy and learn, um, both for you know GIS management and folks that are actually curating this content in these applications. And then ultimately those folks that are out there learning and, 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 and using the application. You sign in once, you get all of the, all these capabilities one, in one app. Um, you know, there's this elimination of the, the, the duplicate offline content. Um, so if you wanted to take and go offline with collector and do data, you know, data collection out in the field and maybe a, an area with spotty coverage, but then you also wanted to take a map offline just to just to view, right? That was two separate downloads, two different maps that you're downloading and two different applications on the same de device. This really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So now you've got a simple and really elegant way to, to take your maps offline one time and store them on your device one time. Um, smaller aggregate app footprint download, of course, less apps means less, uh, you know, uh, stuff that you're downloading and maintaining. And then really just a broader consistency across the apps is what we're going to be able to kind of ship with with one field maps application. Um, okay, move in. All right, <clears throat> well, we'll get into a little bit of um, I guess the you know the the, the core functionality that um, uh, that is delivered with with the field maps and really, you know obviously the mobile application is a huge piece of this, um, but I would say you know we're, we'll, we'll focus the talk around today is uh, really two two different applications right uh, again the mobile application which allows you to view maps, collect and update data, record and share tracks, 
indoor mapping is supported inside of it ultimately and it's kind of probably hard to see right now but the uh, it's it's out in gray uh, it's kind of grayed out because it is coming in additional phases but that the receiving completion of work assignments will be done in that mobile app and then the turn by turn navigation as well but really you know what's really kind of unique about the field maps application is it it is a, is it's a holistic solution um, and what i mean by that is there's a back office web app that allows you to kind of um, sort of curate the content that's going to be used in your field maps. Um, it allows you to simplify those map deployments, configure and deploy maps, manage offline content, um, and even create and preview smart forms, which is really, really cool. And I'll, I'll get into that um, at, at greater detail on what that what I mean by smart forms instead of field maps. It's pretty exciting. And then ultimately with that application, again, it's not there right now. It's coming in phases, but the dispatching and, and management of work um, will be done in that back office web application. Um, move on. All right, in terms of the mobile map, right? Um, so just recent capabilities, what you will see um, if you open up field maps right now, um, you, you, it's gonna look a lot like Collector, right? It was actually uh, built off of the Collector code base. Um, so really the transition from, from Collector into field maps should be pretty straightforward um, because it is kind of that, that that same underlying um, code base that we've we've kind of built the application off of. Um, so it's it's going to look and feel a lot like Collector. Um, some key capabilities though that we've shipped out already: anonymous map views, um, so you can share out and browse public maps all throughout ArcGIS Online um, and map packages for that matter. Um, obviously, key capabilities involve um, map viewing. So, you know, you've got the ability to take advantage of rich cartographic maps, updates in real time to those maps. You can search for, of course, locations, addresses, or features in the map. Um, this, this concept of map markup, which was traditionally taken care of in the Explorer application, you know, the freehand sketch, the marker placement, hey, this is you know, there's a there's a, a, a down tree on the street uh, here. You can mark it up and and ultimately share that back to to peers out in the field by email or or through the organization through your ArcGIS organization. So that's that's in field maps. Of course, the high accuracy data collection that you're used to using and taking advantage of in, inside of ArcGIS Collector. You know, the capturing of point lines and area features using you know external. Uh, GNSS receivers or the map itself, right? That's all, um, you know, baked in and, and already there in field maps. So what you're, what you're used to doing in terms of high accuracy data collection is there in field maps right now. Um, I've already kind of called this out, but just a little more foreshadowing, this robust smart form editing for inspections is super cool, makes it really easy to kind of do inspections. There's con contingent and conditional visibility that you can set up and really more to come there, um, which is very exciting. And I'll, I'll show that at, at more detail here soon. I mean, uh, the, you know, the ability to record and share location tracks, like I mentioned before, if anybody's used to or, or familiar with that that tracker application that that maybe you've seen before, I won't demo it today. I just don't have enough time to get into it. But again, that's that concept of, hey, you know, I've got this phone on my hip or in my pocket. I click a button and it starts tracking my location. And this is is wildly, wildly um, important, right, and very popular um, in situational awareness um, you know, situations in law enforcement, emergency management, of course, but then also, you know, proof of inspection sort of workflows and like the utility space or the public workspace. Um, if you've got third party vendors, not vendors, but um, maybe contractors that are doing work, you know, how do, how do you understand where they're at? Um, if they're if they're spending time at that at that location, right, all those kind of workflows are are uh, supported by that tracker capability. And again, was was inside of ArcGIS Tracker and now is all in, in ArcGIS Field Maps and it's available right now. And then for those that are interested in doing indoor mapping, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time talking about it today, but that's cap uh, you know, there's capabilities for indoor, you know, floor picking, um, facility identification, obviously inspections and asset management inside of inside of a uh, uh, a facility um, or a building, right? That's that's all uh, uh, there as well, and it it actually works really well with a um, a new technology that we've got in the platform called ArcGIS Indoors, which is probably another set of sessions and uh, not a lot of time to talk about that today, but um, just wanted to call that out. Moving on, just a um, you know, really what I wanted to talk about, and I think this is. Um, this is pretty important. And if there's any questions on this, please feel free to reach out. My email was in, um, you know, the first slide here, but I can, you know, stick around and answer any questions in the chat or over the call. Um, but, you know, in terms of, of licensing, um, 
you know, with the field worker, basically, so this is, I think this kind of outlines it pretty well. Um, what I'll say is in field maps, field maps will work with whatever user type you've got, right? So if you've got a field worker license, a creator license, or a GIS pro named user, one of those named users, in field maps, you can do things like perform inspections, create um, or update asset inventory, add photos, right? All of those kind of editing workflows are supported when you have when you take that license to the application. If you've just got a viewer named user, you can still achieve that situational awareness and view dynamic web maps, use offline maps, create markup, those capabilities that you're used to doing in Explorer, right? You bring a viewer named user into the application. The application itself is just smart enough to understand what you've got access to. So it's not going to present any editing applications because because it knows it, you know, that you don't have the ability to actually make those editing changes, if that makes sense which is kind of nice. If you've got the premium application, the ArcGIS tracker license on top of your named user, right? Then that tracking capability is gonna be presented to you in the application. You can flip that switch and I'll show you what it looks like here in a second. Um, and then ultimately report your location in real time. Um, so just wanted to call that out, right? Again, it's, I would say the application field maps in general is, is, is uh, user type smart, if that makes sense. So it'll pick up on, you know, what you have or what you're bringing, what, what kind of user type you're bringing into that application and present capabilities based on that, that user type. Um, so just want to call that out. Uh, boy, I, I check do a time check here um i get till quarter to okay i think i'm gonna go and and i'm gonna pause on going through more slides and get into let me check on where i'm at with my slides right now uh, maybe i've got a couple more that i want to roll through before i throw, go to a demo i just want to make sure that i can show show the technology in action um and give give enough time for for questions i'm going to move through these really quickly though the next ones just again a couple of capabilities these slides will be made available to everybody but i'm going to move through these fast like i mentioned right so there's you know the map viewing capabilities are there advanced symbology labeling finally is has, has been in collector and it's inside of uh Arc, arcgis field maps with arcade expressions group layers pop-ups with Arcade, including feature sets, um, layer refresh and auto updates are all supported too. Um, of course, the typical map tools, GPS, you know, rotating using the compass, base maps, switchers, you know, bookmarks, layers, legends, measuring, searching, sharing the map, all of that is all supported um, out of the box. Um, markup capabilities in terms of what you can do there. Um, again, it's it's that ability to kind of draw in a line or an arrow or an area, choose a color, label it, save it out to others inside of your organization, share it as a snapshot, um, maybe share it in an email. Um, all of that is uh, again supported, and that's that's typical um, capability that you're used to seeing inside of inside of Explorer, right? So that's there too. Um, I mentioned high accuracy data collection. Again, apologies for moving quickly. Um, but again, the point is it supports what you're used to doing inside of ArcGIS Collector. Um, you know, if you need, uh, you know, there's, 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 you know, GNSS uh, partners that we've that we've uh, partnered with, you know, Dual, Garmin, some of these others on, on the list. Um, so the point is, uh, I don't want to go into to, to a lot of detail here with this, but it's all supported. What you're used to seeing in Collector is there too. Um, inspections are a key workflow um, that we've recognized, and uh, you know we we handle we handle this pretty well, I think. Um, so 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 the ability to work with um, versioning inside of inside of your uh, services that are coming from either ArcGIS, well, in ArcGIS Enterprise, really, um, we support traditional versioning. If you're um, kind of up on uh, what branch versioning means. And that's uh, kind of the new, the new version of versioning for lack of a better set of terminology there, but um, we support that as well. Um, so more to come there, that's kind of a big topic, but uh, just know that that is uh, kind of all supported inside of field maps. Historical inspections um, using a one-to-many relationship through you know related tables, that's supported. And I'll, I'll get into that in a demonstration here. Um, and then those smart form capabilities, uh, th th those are, uh, I mean, extremely exciting. You've got the ability to organize attributes, um, conditional visibilities there, pick lists, required fields, that's all configured in that back office application. Um, and I'll get into that here in a second with a demonstration. So um, inspections are definitely supported inside of field maps and it makes that workflow really, really easy. 
Um, and then I've, you know, I've called out already uh, this location tracking capability. You'll see in that diagram on the right hand side, it says on device my tracks, right? And it's just a switch. So that means if you bring that tracker license, that premium license to the application, that switch is made available to you and you can flip it on. It's going to pick up your tracks, right? Um, so that, that, you know, there's there's a lot to the, the tracker capability. There's a, it's basically a battery savings location tracking capability um, that allows you to record things like, uh, you know, speed, heading, elevation, whether or not you're driving or walking or riding a bike, things like that. Um, and again, it's all just written, written into a feature service, either in your, you know, wherever your WebGIS is, ArcGIS Online, ArcGIS Enterprise. Um, you know, it, it basically hydrates those feature layers back in those systems. And then the other thing that I'll call out before I get into kind of a demonstration, um, universal app links. If you're if you're used to working with with this kind of app linking in some of our other um, field applications, it is supported. There's a well-defined URL scheme that works with field maps. So basically, you see in some of these demonstrations here, you can, you know, through an app link through a URL, you can open up a map centered at a particular location and zoom to a particular scale. Um, you can open up a mat, map and search for a, a feature um, by ID. Uh, so that's just, um, again, all these are, again, it's kind of hard to see here, but it's using this HTTPS call fieldmaps.arcgis.app. And then it's passing in a, a specific set of URL parameters. If you're used to, again, working with these with these URL schemes and app linking, um, the point of me is uh, calling this out is it's it's supported inside of ArcGIS field maps. And there's a lot of what you're used to doing in some of those other applications is there, right? So um, that list includes things that I've already mentioned. Um, you can even pass in updating of attributes on an existing feature through a link. Um, so there's, there's a lot there. Uh, again, if you've got specific questions around that, please let me know. Um, we can take that conversation either, you know, here in the call or, or maybe offline, but just know it's there. Um, all right. What else here? Okay. So let me, um, let me get <laughs> real fancy here. Let me try to, I'm going to stop my share on my PC and I'm going to try and just everybody Hold your breath and fingers crossed. I'm going to try to share my iPad real quick. Okay. Hoping it comes in okay. There might be a little bit of a lag. I can see it on my screen, but it looks like it is coming through. So um, this is ArcGIS field maps, right? Again, like I mentioned, it looks really, really similar to what you're seeing in Collector. Um, it's got that same look and feel. Um, this is, you know, after logging in, which I've already done, I've got the ability to basically find any map that I want, right? I, I'm, I'm introduced to <clears throat> the current map that I've got selected. Again, I've already called out what it looks like to track my location by flipping on that tracker capability. Again, because my named user that I've logged into this application with has that premium capability on top of it. I've got favorites in here that I want. Uh, maybe I keep going back to, um, and that's pretty straightforward to set up if I've got a map that is a favorite. Um, you know, this, this new Albany DPW asset editor is one of my favorites already, but you know, if maybe this is, uh, maybe this blight problems one is a favorite, I can click add to favorites and that's just going to show up in the top here. So I can quickly navigate to that. Um, if I'm constantly going to it, um, one thing that I'll do just again, in searching for maps that have been curated for me, you'll notice that I can filter down by those that are read only or by editing, right? And again, this this gets into that capability of you know I, I bring I bring a particular user type into the application, and it's smart enough to understand that I have the ability to you know edit web maps, but then there's read only too. So I can basically what I can do is search by a particular capability that's offered in that web map that's been curated for me or by me. Um, I'll hit cancel there. And really what I wanted to show just very quickly here, um, I guess I got 20 minutes, so I think we're okay on time. Um, this is a um, just a kind of a demonstration example, a small municipality here in central Ohio, um, New Albany, you know, Department of Public Works asset editor. So there's all kinds of assets here, but just to give you a little bit of a tour of, of what this application looks like, again, very similar to Collector if you're, you're picking up on that. Um, <clears throat> I have the ability of course to drop in um, a new feature by clicking the plus button in the bottom right hand corner. 
my templates are presented to me. So I see that I could drop in a street light, for example, there's culverts, bridges, um, street signs. I could draw in a guardrail if I wanted to. In this case, maybe let's drop in a new, um, let's see, it's a street light. And you'll notice here, I don't know, it's hard to see, but I wanted to call out that snapping is enabled. So as I move and I try to, maybe I wanna drop a street light, maybe this isn't the best example, um, but you get the idea that's picking up the vertices along that street segment. Um, so I could actually, you know, use that snapping capability that's just directly inside of the, the field maps application to snap the street light to that street network. Of course, I can add, you know, fill this all out. I mean, this is a pretty robust form. I'm not going to go through everything. Um, Domains are not, doesn't look like I have domains uh, set up in this uh, or pick list, um, you know, that, but those are supported in here. If it's a date field, it's going to show, um, you know, the date uh, picker, just like that. Um, so I'm not, again, I'm not going to go through this whole form, but I'll just click add new and I've dropped in a new one and I'll click submit. All right, so that's pretty straightforward dropping in a new point, nothing new there, um, but I did want to show out that snapping capability. Um, the other thing too, I've mentioned this markup capability. <clears throat> um, so if I click on the ellipsis in the top right hand corner, I see all of those map tools. Um, so maybe I want to flip over my base map. Um, in this case, we'll call out the imagery base map. And let's say for this example, I'm kind of like what I said before, maybe there's a, maybe a street has, uh, or I'm sorry, a tree has fallen over this street and I need to mark it up. Um, so I can go in, turn on my markup tools. Um, I could draw a polygon, add a label, say tree, and then click okay. And then tree down needs to be removed. And then done. I can change the color of that if I wanted to. Um, down there, um, you get the idea, right? So if I go back into my markups again, the sharing, if you click on the top right hand corner right next to done, I can click share. I could share a screenshot or share that markup up um, again through my organization to others in my, in my ArcGIS organization, whether it's online or enterprise. Um, so again, Capabilities that you're used to seeing in, in Explorer are there in field maps. Um, that's what I wanted to show there. Let me clear that. And the other thing in terms of the um, demonstration of the actual application, and I need to stop actually doing the markup. I do have inspections tied into this right now. And what I need to do um, is find a bridge. So I have in this, again, this is you know the scenario for some context. It's a DP, you know, public works asset editor. I can drop in new features like you just saw me do, but then I can also in this application or this configuration of field maps, um, do some inspections on top of a, um, on top of a bridge, right? Uh, one thing that you will notice too, the labeling I've set up here is kind of nice. It's a little bit blurry. I apologize, but it looks really good here on my iPad, but I've got it labeled based on, you know, who owns that particular bridge. Um, and again, this is this is Franklin County and basically the, the name of that or the ID for that particular bridge. So labeling is supported. Um, but in this case, what I'm going to do, because the way I've got this set up, it's a one-to-many relationship inside of this data set. So there's one feature per many, many inspections. And Field Maps just works against those one-to-many relationships out of the box, just like Collector did. So I can select that particular bridge, um, and I got all the attributes for that particular bridge, but I'm not going to edit any of those, right? And I'm going to go in and do bridge inspections, right? Click Add a Bridge Inspection. Um, and I can go in and again, just fill this thing out, right? Um, so, sorry, inspection ID. Yeah, we'll just give it a one, two, three. Um, present condition maybe looks good. Um, inspection type is routine. Maybe that's good, right? The one thing that I will call out here really quickly, and again, this gets into that smart form capability that I've kind of talked about a little bit. Um, if I select poor, you'll notice that something else just popped up, right? So based on that selection of present condition, now I've got more, not just more fields to fill out, but I actually have a group, right? So you can go in and through the back office application, like I keep talking about, right? I've got the ability to group fields. 
Um, and then I also have the ability to set up contingent values or contingent visibility rather based on a selection. So I selected poor, now I've got the ability to fill this out. So maybe the you know the sufficiency rating is 56 and maybe I wanna, you know, maybe we need to, you know, reconstruction is necessary here and then click submit, right? And I'm off and running. Um, so that's my bridge inspection. So I just, you know, I briefly wanted to talk about what that looked like. Um, again, I think, you know, if you're used to using collector, it might be a little bit repetitive. The new thing there is definitely the uh, um, that smart form capability that I just hit on. Um, but uh, yeah, just wanted to show what that field application uh, kind of looks like. So let me stop sharing my iPad um, and do my best to fumble back into a demo. Go to my second screen, click share. Thanks for bearing with me on, on that. Um, Okay, let me bear with me. I'm assuming you can see my background, hopefully. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so to kind of continue on the demonstration, I'm gonna pivot a little bit. Um, I know I've got about, I wanna do 10 minutes or so left to demo um, and wrap it up with some slides. So I do have some time for questions. I do, I do see questions, I'm not ignoring them, but I suppose maybe I'm on a roll right now and I don't want to, I just want to kind of get through all the demonstrations here before I address some of those questions. Um, okay, so <clears throat> let's pivot a little bit, right? Now, I, you know, what I was just doing, I was playing maybe the role of a uh, public works, um, you know, worker out in the field doing inspections, et cetera, right? Engineers, all that. Now I'm playing the role of maybe somebody curing this application, building the content, building the configuration, right? back in my ArcGIS organization. So in this case, I'm in ArcGIS Online. I've logged in already. And you'll notice now <clears throat> um, in our app launcher, next to your name, you have the ability to click on this field maps. And I've already done that, right? So I've got the field maps app. And this is what this looks like, right? So this again is that back office application. Um, it's in the browser. Again, for the curation of these web maps, it allows you um, you know, again, to, to get into some of these template designs and configure the smart forms and all of that, right? Um, you can configure what's gonna be able to, you're, you'll be able to take offline. Um, all of that is done back in this field maps application. Um, so these are maps that I have authored uh, that I'm seeing right now. And what I wanna do is actually open up, I'll go in and search for that New Albany example. And let's just take, take that for a little bit of a spin ride. So I've selected my 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 web map that I wanna, uh, again, work with. Um, I've got some basic information about that particular map, right, the summary of it, um, whether or not that I want that app to actually be available in the Field Maps mobile application, right? I can turn that off here if I wanted to. Um, so all these basic, you know, again, this is kind of like attribution for that particular, um, for that particular web map. Where, where it really gets interesting is when you click on this content and it's picking up on all of those layers that again have been fed into that web map already back in when you're actually configuring the web map in the map viewer inside of ArcGIS Online. So I've already done that, right? I've kind of dropped in my layers into that web map. Um, they're pretty much ready to go, but I want to do some further configuration inside of this web map, or I'm sorry, this field maps application. Um, a couple of things that I want to talk about. So it's picking up on editable layers. Um, of course, if this was a huge list of, of layers, I could find that content or search for a particular layer, but it groups it out into those layers that actually have editing enabled on them. And then there's others that are just reference layers, right? So of course the uh, street center lines are just reference layers inside of that application. Um, so again, I had Franklin County street center lines. The reason why they're showing up in reference layers is just they, they don't have editing enabled on that actual feature layer. So it's picking up on that. Tables inside of this, that bridge inspection table that I, that I kind of went through, that one-to-many relationship of selecting a bridge, multiple inspections on that particular bridge, that's all handled in that bridge inspection table and that's shown up here. And then of course the base map, right? Which I don't have a whole lot of control control over. One thing that I wanted to talk about, if you're familiar with feature templates, right? So a, a template is basically how that, the, the default for that particular feature, when you drop in a new point for that feature template, of course, it's going to go back to that same feature service inside of ArcGIS Online, but you can control the symbology of it. And you can also can control some defaults for that particular um for that particular data set in terms of the attribution, right? So maybe I wanted to um, duplicate this, this right now. So right now, the default values for streetlights in this case, and again, I'm picking up on all the, all the attribution inside of that particular layer. 
so far. But maybe I wanted to create a series of templates that represented different streetlight types. It's as simple as going in here and clicking duplicate. And now I can, I've got a copy of that template and I can go in and say for this one, that type is gonna be 30. Maybe I wanna change the name of that. So it's type 30, right? And I click save and this is just gonna show up as as another option to drop in, again, back in my field maps application, I go in to drop a new point, I can select street lights dash type 30 and drop in that particular feature and it's gonna have those default values on it. So again, you're used to maybe working with feature templates in, in the ArcGIS platform. This is a really nice way to actually configure those out directly for use in the field maps application. Okay, I wanted to call that out there. Um, what else really quickly? And there's a lot to get into here. Um, maybe I'll flip into, uh, let's go into the, the form capability. So you saw in my bridge inspection table. So now again, I, I can, you know, I've got templates again. I've, I've selected my bridge inspections uh, table for that one to many relationship. Again, multiple inspections potentially on a bridge. Um, what I can do, again, the templates are there, but if I click on form, really for any of these editable layers, I have the ability to change the form. Um, but here's where you can actually configure what that form looks like. Um, I've got the ability to do all kinds of things, right? I can reorder things. I can add new groups in here. Um, I can do all kinds of stuff. So let me, uh, probably should have, uh, let me clear all of this and let's just start from scratch. <clears throat> Again, you saw the form kind of done um, in, in the in the field application, but let me start from scratch. So again, I've got this, this bridge inspection table. These are the fields inside of that bridge inspection table. I want inspection ID is going to be my first thing, uh, first field to fill out my inspection type. It's again, just dragging and dropping those fields. I can reorder them. I can do whatever I want, right? Um, if you remember, I said there was a present condition field. Um, and oh, let me go back a second, sorry. That's properties for that particular field. Um, I also wanted to do, um, well, actually let's go in. If, if you remember in that, in that same, uh, in that demonstration that I showed, there's, uh, there was a group of fields. So if you wanna create a group, you can drag and drop a new group and then drop in fields that you want to be associated with that group just in that group um, area. So I can say proposed action, um, sufficiency rating, Oop, I missed, that's going to be in that group name and maybe inspection date, inspection date might should probably be up here, right? It's picking up the fields. And then for each of these fields, right, I've got the ability to kind of change the formatting of it, right? Um, the, the display name, I can't change the type, but the hint, I could drop in a hint if I wanted to, I can make it required directly inside of this, um, this uh, property section for that particular field. And again, that persists through all of these. This happens to be a date field. So I've got more options in terms of settings for properties on that date field. Um, you get the idea. But the one thing that I wanted to talk about was that conditional visibility. So my group name, if you remember, when I selected inspection type, right, was poor, it showed that that group name. Well, all that's doing, and I'm not going to get into this because we're running up on it, right, but I can click on for, so for that group, conditional visibility, I'd add an inspection or expression, and this is just, you're writing a, basically you're writing an arcade expression that basically controls whether or not, right, or what value in that, in this case, what the way I would configure it is, if I select poor for, um, um, oh, I can't remember what the question was, but the I think it was the status of that bridge. If I select poor, show that group, and you're literally just gonna code it in with a simple arcade expression. Again, I don't wanna get into it right now because that's just, uh, you know, we're running up against it, but I, um, um, we've got five minutes or so, but that's how that's done, right? Again, it's all controlled through, through that arcade um, expression here. Um, so anyways, I, I kind of blew through that a little bit quick, but there's a lot here to unpack. Um, the, the key things in, in terms of content, what you've got control over directly in this field application is the templates, right? So the ability to drop in and configure new templates for features, and then the robust forms that you can build out, right? Which is really, really cool. And that it just, it, 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 it um, you know, it just allows for much more flexibility in the forms that you present to your end users out in the field. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, the other thing that I'll just quickly talk about, I'm going to discard those changes um, and maybe really quick. 
let me show you what that expression, because I kind of blew through that and I kind of feel bad. So that expression type that was actually there before, all that, all that arcade expression that you saw that was actually demoed inside of the field application, it's just feature dot present condition, and that's the field name equals poor. And as long as you, you drop that arcade in, so that's just looking at, again, that present condition field, if it's selected as poor, show that group, right? So that's all that was. Just want to hit on that real quick. Um, other things in this field app, uh, the, the field maps application back in the office, right? I can, um, uh, I can control um, offline areas if I wanted to. Um, I can just specify some settings on the features and attachment delivery. Um, I can use a tile package for offline base map. So all of this is all controlled directly inside of this in, in this interface, as well as sharing, right? So I can quickly share out this field map um, you know, to those that have, you know, that ought to have access to it. So it can be anybody in the public. Um, it could be just to me or obviously uh, specific groups or the entire organization that I'm, that I'm in right now. Okay. Um, boy, that was a whirlwind. I hope that was helpful. I hope it made some sense. Um, uh, let me go back into some slides really quickly because I think that's all I wanted to show back here in the, uh, in the office, in the, in the field application. Um, okay. The last thing before I wrap up, hoping you see this. Um, well, I don't know if this is super helpful, but again, I just wanted to call out the phases that we have um, for, for rollout in this capability of field maps, right? Again, there's um, a lot, of ca lot of capabilities, a lot of applications that have been in the platform that we're pouring into one application now, right? I've already mentioned that collector, explorer, and tracker capabilities have been in there since fall, but the workforce and navigator capabilities, so you'll see workforce coming soon um, in phase two. And again, I'm not sure when that's gonna be. I'm, uh, I'm, I don't work in Redland, so I don't, I don't have a good lens on when this might be. Um, and then phase three, we'll, we'll start to roll in that navigator capability as well. Well, actually in phase three, all, all of those capabilities are gonna be uh, directly inside of that, inside of one application. Um, so, so we're getting there. Uh, there there's uh, uh, quite a bit of capability in there right now, but again, that workforce, that work order management inside of the office and out, out of the office, um, work order generation, acceptance, all that um, is coming and the navigator is coming as well. Um, more uh, kind of product pipeline sort of stuff, more in the, in the realm of smart forms, um, inline attachments, inline relationships, calculated values, right? So the ability to answer a set of questions inside of that form and then have it do an automated calculation. Um, that's coming inside of that smart, smart form. That's all gonna be handled by, uh, by Arcade. Contingent values, attribute rules are gonna be supported, input types, a lot there, right, in smart forms. Um, indoor mapping through integration with ArcGIS indoors, utility network integration, um, you know, more high accuracy support is coming. And then uh, the support for webhooks is coming as well, which if you're used to working with Survey123 and webhooks and Jordan, if you're on the call, I don't know if you're going to get into that next, but um, some of that capability is going to be coming into the field maps application at some point soon. Uh, push notifications as well, uh, so so lots there. Um, and I I think I think that's it. Uh, I know that was a ton of content. Um, I see there's a there's a some activity in the chat room uh, right now, so let me open that up and uh, let's see. Oh, looks like Jordan. Thanks. Looks like you're on. Jordan's on on my team. We we are uh, so he's in here as well. I think he's presenting next. So, Jordan, I don't know if you've got all these answers answered. I mean, some of them, but I don't know if they were answered correctly. <laughs> I'm sure you, I'm sure I'll you give you an answer. There. I don't know if it's right or not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I see. Okay, did I miss when this was going to be? Okay, yeah. So you got that answered. Um, both the field application the mobile application is out there right now as well as that um back office configuration application in the browser that allows you to do that um uh kind of that workflow that i just walked through um can you use smart forms on premium arcgis oh on-prem arcgis feature services yes so can you use far smart forms with on-premise ArcGIS server feature services. Yes, is is um, uh, 
You could certainly do it if you're, if you're, and this is also, I should also say too, um, to everybody, this is supported in ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Enterprise as well. Um, so if you've got an on-prem portal with uh, servers connected to it, right, it would, it, it, that capability is there. Um, I can't remember exactly which version of portal the field maps browser-based application is shipped into. I want to say at 1081, we started shipping it just directly inside of the portal application, but I'd have to double check on that. Um, but all to say, uh, to your point, yeah, you could you could certainly do it on-prem if you've got an on-prem portal with ArcGIS Enterprise, you know, based deployment, or if it's feature services coming from a standalone ArcGIS server, you've got them registered as content inside of ArcGIS Online, you're feeding those into a web map, you should be able to use that just like you've always been able to do inside of ArcGIS Collector, yeah. And by the way, the smart form capability, just so everybody, um, I mean, this is a little more foreshadowing for the, like this is an overall platform capability. Um, that smart form capability, the contingent values, the, the work that you can do inside a collector, all of that, or I'm sorry, with Arcade um, rather, um, all of that is just a part of the web map specification and field maps happens to be the first client application that we ship inside of our platform that actually takes advantage of that web map specification. So. More to come there. Um, really what I'm trying to say is that smart form capability will potentially be available in other applications throughout the platform. Not just It's not just a field maps capability, it's a platform capability. Field maps is just the only one smart enough to know how to, what to do with it, right? In, in its application, if that makes sense. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. Sure. I think I took too much. Uh, looks like feature reports and web hooks from Justin. Um, maybe direct message me in this, Justin, if you want to. I don't want to take any more time. I'm I'm a couple minutes over already. Um, but I, I I don't I don't understand. Maybe a little more detail on what you're asking there would be good. But maybe we can have a chat on the side. <laughs> 